All right, we finished the site. We're happy. Everyone's uh, thrilled. We're ready to go ahead and launch. We show it to our client. The client says, wait a minute, that uh, index page looks a little bit too bare. We want to add some content to it. I said, okay, well, we can do that. So he says, well, this is what we want it to look like. And this is the content that we want to use for it. So let's go ahead and take a look. So each of these are going to be articles inside a special section. And that section is going to have a class of spotlight. So you can have many sections on a page, as we saw when we had the one page website, and each one could have a class. Or if we were going to use navigation, it would have an ID. So here we're not going to be using that for navigation. So all we need is a class so that we can add um, we can add CSS specifically for this section. All right, so let's go ahead and now I can copy this and paste it into my HTML, but that would be bad. What I really need to do is come into my content page, add, and then edit there. And there's a reason why you want to do that. You want to have a copy of this content somewhere besides on the web pages. Control V. Okay, so there's Article 1. And then if we come down here, we can see this is Article 2. Control C. Control V. And then we have Article 3. Control C. Control V. I should say three. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we have our three articles. Let's move this down a little bit. And uh, we, let's just go ahead and copy this now, and then we'll finish up the formatting. All right, so I'm missing a closed section. No, see, here's a closed section tag. This is important. If we leave it like this, we're in trouble. All the articles have to be in that section. So I'm going to do a cut again, so sort of like we did with the div, and paste it down here. And then here I'll put end of spotlight. And then we'll know why that closed section is there. So I'll hold down my control key and press the slash. All right, now I'm ready to go ahead and copy this whole mess. Control C. Or copy and then go into my index page now my index page is actually working absolutely perfectly right so do I want to hose it up so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do file save as and I'm gonna call this index underscore back and save Okay, so if I completely hose up the index page, I can always go to the backup and start again, because sometimes that happens, particularly when we're adding content after we finish building. So I'm going to cl close this index uh, back because I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be actually doing the index page. So now I've opened it back up. We have this section. So this has to be after this section right here and before the footer control v and now we have a new section and you can see that things are not where they should be so i'm going to go ahead and copy this and tab it over because this is inside the section and then i'm going to take the rest of this and tab it over so it's underneath that and then tab a section over, because it should be with footer. And now you can see everything lines up pretty much okay. Inside here, these should be tabbed over a little bit. And we are done. All right, so now everything is nicely tabbed over. Let's see what we've done. Let's do file, save all, and let's Go ahead and refresh the page. All right, well, nothing exploded. And then we go down, ah, look at that. So everything is sort of okay, but not really. Those articles are 
a little bit too big, so we're going to have to do some CSS to get them the way we want them. <laughs> that they're not really where they where we want them to be. In fact, aren't I missing one? Where's where's my third one? I seem to have two. And if we look out here, we can find there's a third one. What? All right. So the problem is these pictures are much larger than we want the container to be. And then they're overflowing into that. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. Let's go into our CSS. And let's see. So this is uh, still in the correct order. So that we have our columns. And then the next thing we have is our section. uh dot spotlight sort of like what we did when we created a if we wanted to create a section we go section dot spotlight so this is targeting a section that has the spotlight tag and then we'll do image and we'll say that the width is going to be a hundred percent so we want these to shrink if they're bigger than the container and be only the width of the container. So we'll do file, save all, and refresh. Ah, much better. Now they're kind of lined up, um, but they're still kind of far apart. So one of the problems we have, let's take a look at if we have done anything with figure, and we have not. So the figure has an awful lot of padding and margin to it. And that is causing some issues also. All right, so here is our figure tag. And you can see that it has uh, 40 pixels of margin uh, left to right and 16 up and down. So let's go ahead and take away that margin. And since we're doing the figure and the image is in the figure, we need to come up here above it and we'll just, we'll do section dot spotlight um, figure and for that we want to do margin zero that'll take away all the margin all around it let's do file save all and then refresh nice okay now everything is a little bit more aligned the way we want it let's see <laughs> Okay, next thing we want to do is go ahead and put a cyan background to that. Let's see, I think we have that somewhere. Yeah, light cyan. So we're going to do background color for each of the articles. Control C. All right, so we have section dot spotlight um, article. And now we have that background color. Let's go ahead and put a border on it too. Let's do border. Whoops. Hey, when it does that. Border. And we'll do the standard one pixel solid black. Let's do file, save all, and refresh. Okay. It's looking a lot better. Now we want to go ahead and let's take care of our um, button at the bottom. So if we take a look at our HTML, we can say I gave that a class of button. It's just a paragraph, um, but we want all the buttons to have the same thing. So we're going to take a paragraph. There is actually a button HTML tag, but we use that for forms not for styling something that looks like a button. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a style for that. And that will be dot button because we want to have three of them. So 
and what we're going to say for the board is going to be a border and we'll do the standard one pixel solid black and let's give it a background color and we'll make it blue so that'll be RGB um, red zero red zero RG zero green and then 255 blue and that will give us a blue color blue not buck blue and then I'll comment that out and let's do file save all and refresh okay well I can't see it so let's go in and change the color and we'll make that white and we can use white as a color file save all and refresh uh oh okay that didn't do that oh okay so why didn't that work um, and that's because that the color that we're trying to change is not inside the um, it's not the button that's causing it to be blue. It's going to be dot button. It's the anchor tag again that's causing that. And then we'll do color white. So that's important to remember. You think, okay, I want the color of the text inside the button to be um, white and then it doesn't turn white and that's because we're not we're overwriting the wrong property the anchor tag says whenever you have an anchor tag make it blue all right there it is now it's white all right and then let's see um get rid of the line so we've done that before the text decoration none and then we want to center it inside that container remember paragraphs are all left aligned now so we'll do that that's inside the button we want to center it inside the button so we'll do um text align oops text align center and we'll do file save all and refresh okay notice now that let's see let's add some padding Let's do let's do padding um, five pixels. Oops, four five pixels up and down, and then zero left and right. Because remember, the the, the button's going to take up the width of the container. We don't need any padding there. File, save all, and refresh. All right, that made the buttons a little bit bigger, but they're not aligning. And we're going to use Flexbox in order to be able to align them. <clears throat> so we're going to go into the section Spotlight Article. Remember, the article has three. Let's go into here. It So uh, here's the article. It has an H2, a figure, an H3, a P, and a P. Those children... We want them to flex. So let's go in there and do that. So we're going to say display flex. Now, remember, it automatically does it in row. So we're going to have to change it because we don't want it to go side by side. What we want to do is we want to say that the flex flow is going to be column. Now it'll be up and down. And then we're going to do justify content space between. And that's going to put the top object at the very top of the article and the button at the very bottom of the article. And then space everything else will equally from there. So let's do file, save all, and refresh. What? All right, that looks good. 
Uh, the only other thing that we want to do, let's see. Let's do this. I wonder if this works. Just notice that I had a problem with. Yeah, let's do display block. And do file, save all, and refresh. See, I didn't have display block, so I noticed that when I came over here, the only time it would turn into a hand is when it looked, when it clicked on the actual there. But we want to have the whole box be clickable. So that looks good. The last thing we're going to do is a little hover. So we'll come down here and we'll do dot button a colon hover. So when someone hovers over that button, what do we want to do? Let's do a background color of black. Okay, then the color of the text won't make a difference. File, save all, and refresh. Nice. So when a person comes over, you can see a little bit of difference with that. And the last thing we want to do is that footer. Footer kind of looks ugly. It's kind of like kind of a forgotten thing. So um, let's go ahead and do a background. Okay, let's do a background color and make it similar to the buttons and see how that looks. All right, so we're going to have a footer. Seemed like our forgotten little piece of text at the bottom. Let's do the background color. And the background color is going to be the same as our button. Control C. I think that looked nice matching. Control V. And then, of course, we're going to have to uh, change the text. So uh, unlike the anchor tag, the footer just had all the text in the footer is now going to have a color of white. And let's go ahead and add some padding so it's not a little tiny thing. And we'll do 20 pixels above and below and zero pixels left and right. <clears throat> let's in fact, let's do, um, yeah, that's good. And do file, save all, and refresh. Nice. All right, so that's a better page. I think this this looks good at the bottom here. How is it going to look um, on membership? See, I still think it looks good because it kind of matches what we're using at the top of the page. So I think that looks pretty good. And then mission. All right, so our user now is very happy with what we have done. And we are done with this project. The only thing left is to create a subdomain and to upload it to Freehostia. And that by now in the class, you should be able to do that on your own. Just make sure, again, you use the drag and drop methodology. You're going to have some issues, not issues, but let's go into our test flex. Um, nothing is over 255. And that's the only thing that we always have to be careful of. So you want to do the same thing with your content. So we're going to have to grab now. The, I thought we had a picture in here, but maybe I, I dragged it out. We had that finished site PNG. You want to make sure that you don't try to upload that, although it's only six to nine, so I guess we could. All right, everything else is nice and small. So go ahead and upload to Freehostia, and then copy and paste that address into the into the con content. You want to zip your um, assignment six folder and upload that. And that's going to have the Flexbox demo and the Tennis Flex. You don't have to create a float a um, subdomain for the Flexbox demo. Your instructor can go ahead and grade that within the zip file. All right, and that's it.